So the story of 2021, we've got um, a bunch of different buckets that we put these items into, but we're going to start with redevelopment to cover affordable housing, our business assistance programs, rental housing, home ownership, and then the staff behind all of this work. Thank you. So what we do is more than just numbers and dollars. It's about the people. The HRA and EDA programs helped 504 households this year alone. This year's presentation is going to be structured a little differently than we've done in the past, and it's going to focus on some of the stories behind the numbers, but we did want you to be able to see um, how those 504 households broke down amongst the different HRA programs, things like our first-time homebuyer households, our remodeling consultants, our Section 8 households, loan payoffs, energy squad visits, um, all these great things that we do. But we're going to jump right into redevelopment first, and we'll cover a couple of details here and then move on to the story. Um, in terms of rental housing, construction continued on the Riley project. This is the second project in the city that involved preservation and rehabilitation of existing uh, naturally occurring affordable housing. That project is expected to be completed this May. Also under construction now, um, beginning in 2021, this project began in, sorry, began in 2021, and that's the second half of the RF64 project. It is the Raya Apartments. That's 237 market rate apartments across from Target and Home Depot. They're being constructed by Schaefer Richardson and going up really quickly. The construction is expected to be complete on those projects in June and July of this year. Um, after some significant pandemic-related challenges, the HRA was able to help push the Linview project over our financing finish line, and it's now under construction at 65th and Lindale. I'll talk about that one a little more in a minute. And then in terms of owner-occupied housing, we've got construction of the RF64 townhomes. That continued this year. However, these two were impacted significantly by the pandemic. We'll talk about that. And these latest uh, eight units will be uh, sold at market rate rather than an affordable um, price, which the first 32 were done at. And then we've got a couple of projects in process now. After many, many years of having a brewery on our wish list, uh, one is looking at a location in Richfield. The planned site of Benefactor Brewery is located just north of Lake Winds in the Lindale Gardens development. And the HRA provided some gap financing to help make that happening, make that happen. And then a very exciting opportunity came our way last year when we were approached by the estate of Jerry Mathwig. He was the former owner of Metro Sales with an offer of a donation of part of their property in the southeast corner of town. The property is valued at about $2.4 million and um, ownership of this piece, we'll see in a slide in a, a few slides from now, will offer the HRA additional influence over what happens in this corner of town because we already own another key piece of property there. As far as we know, this is the first time in history that um, this has happened, that the HRA has received a donation like this. And we're really looking forward to continuing our partnership with the Mathwig Estate in 2022 as we look um, at opportunities to develop here. So the real story of 2021 um, were supply chain issues, and they forced staff and developers and pretty much everyone in the world to pivot again and again. Uh, going back to the Linview project, which is shown here in the, in the top slide, there were significant challenges to that project related to material costs. In May of uh, 2021, lumber prices reached a high of nearly three times the pre-pandemic record. So that obviously will challenge any projects pro forma. The HRA was able to help that project by providing gap fund financing to help retain the commercial space on the ground floor and an adjustment to the duration of the TIF assistance from 17 to 20 years. And those adjustments helped to push that project over the finish line. It is now under construction. I'm sure you've all seen out there. This project is also another great example of the ways in which the development that we've been working on over this past 10 years has, um, has helped us and helped us to be more creative. 
So first, there was the additional assistance that we could give when the developer came back and said, we're thinking of removing this commercial. We had additional assistance available. We could, we could offer that to help plug that hole. But also in this case, the project will, um, it will not only be providing 10 two-bedroom affordable units, it will also be contributing 15% of the TIF to the Housing and Redevelopment Fund. So normally in, in years past, we've been able to barely eke out one or the other in terms of affordability or pooling. And in this case, we were able to get full pooling plus affordability. And our ability to be creative and negotiate has increased now that developments don't need the entire 26 years of increment to fill their project gaps. And that is because of the other development work we've done in town. So just building on our successes. The RF64 project is in the uh, bottom right corner. That's another project that struggled to adjust to financial impacts of the pandemic. The project saw a 32% cost increase, which forced sale price, sales prices out of the affordable range. So staff explored a variety of options and determined that the HRA would be better served by investing our public money in more, more affordable homeownership opportunities than this project could provide. We agreed to let the developer sell the final units as market rate um, if the current market conditions continued, which they, they have. Um, and that's still, still a win by providing this townhome opportunity for ownership in the city, which we don't have much of. In addition, we transferred the land sale proceeds into the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, where they'll be used to provide affordable ownership opportunities throughout our down payment assistance program and the land trust. All right, moving on from there. We've got some pictures of our ongoing projects. This is the Riley project, the one that I spoke of first with the rehab um, of the NOAA units there in the foreground, and then the new building uh, to the back. Another view of the Riley. Again, this one opens in May. This is the RF64, I'm sorry, this is the RIA project, which is part of the RF, RF64 development, the uh, apartments along Richfield Parkway. There's another shot. We really like their sign there, it's like a smiley face. Here's um, the Linview under construction. This is at 65th and Lindale. Those buildings are all down now. A nice action shot. Another view of the RF64, or I'm sorry, this, the, this is the other side of that project, the RF64 townhomes. Those are the newest units under construction now. And this one is a great shot that shows you the townhomes with the apartments behind and how um, the architecture of those projects is working together. This is a rendering of the Benefactor Brewing uh, project. They'll be going uh, to, the, to the Planning Commission and City Council in upcoming weeks to request approval of that. And then this is the donation property that I mentioned. The, the um, 1600 property is the one that was recently donated to us. You'll see the Mathwig, still uh, estate owned properties in the center, and then another HRA owned property right at the entrance to that 77th Street tunnel. So in the coming months, we're going to be conducting a study and really look at how we can utilize and maximize development in this corner. Okay, so moving to business assistance. In 2021, we were able to help 18 local businesses. Four of those were through displaced business grants. Those are available to, um, to businesses when the city or HRA contributes financially to a project that displaces them. Uh, they are required to relocate in Richfield to be eligible. The grants cover things like moving expenses, uh, renovations to new spaces, signage, lighting, uh, increases in rent, things like that. The projects that we helped were um, displaced because of the Linview project in this case. We helped Boost Mobile, Medriano Agency, which is an insurance company, New Life Wellness, and also Richfield Mobile. 
We also continued our partnership with CEE to um, issue our energy efficiency business grants. We spent uh, 20, the full $20,000 on those grants this year. That covers 20% of um, energy efficiency upgrades for a maximum grant amount of $2,500. And this program piggybacks on programs sponsored by Xcel Energy um, that increase efficiency in general in a business. Several businesses were um, were helped there as well. We spent, oh, I said $20,000. So we can move on there. Uh, just a little bit more on the, the uh, displaced business grant. This was a great example of the EDA responding to the needs of local businesses as we heard them. Uh, this program was approved by the EDA in December of 2020, and it was specifically in response to the Lingview project, which was going to displace a number of small businesses um, at 65th and Lindale. The tenants of the former business were concerned about their options um, and were looking for ways to stay in Richfield. The challenge here was that the rents at these businesses were well below market rate. But between the EDA assistance and some assistance from the developer who offer the services of their broker to help find spaces, um, we were able to help those four businesses, like I said. Um, businesses were eligible if they had been open for at least three months. And again, if they were relocating within Richfield. So some success there. And these are some pictures from New Life Wellness. They relocated um, over by our Cedar Liquor Store. And um, these are some shots of the interior of their new space, which just looks wonderful. And we're so happy that they were able to stay. Here's a new, the new location of Boost Mobile. They moved over to Richfield Shops. Now I'm going to turn it over to um, Assistant CD Director Julie Urban to talk about our affordable housing in 2021. Thank you, Melissa. Um, so the HRA's commitment to affordable housing took several big steps forward in 2021. Uh, in March, the HRA approved revisions to our inclusionary housing policy to encourage our priorities of larger bedroom sizes, deeper affordability, and more accessible housing choices. So while we've unofficially required affordable housing in HRA funded projects way back to the year 2000, since we formalized the policy more recently, the HRA has facilitated 229 new and preserved affordable homes and 148 of these units were approved, preserved or under construction in 2021. So continuing um, several of the other things that we accomplished last year, Back in June, the state legislature approved special legislation that allows us to transfer pooled tax increment into the affordable housing trust fund over the next four years. This gives us the ability to access several million dollars that we can use for new construction and rehabilitation of affordable housing. We anticipate using these funds to help housing developments meet our affordable housing priorities. And in 2021, the HRA also approved the transfer of $640,000 in land sales proceeds from the Cedar Point 2 redevelopment project area to the trust fund to be used for affordable home ownership programs. Our new home program um, is our longtime affordable home ownership program that includes both new construction and acquisition rehab. While there were no new affordable homes added in 2021, time was spent teeing up a vacant lot for new construction, which you'll be hearing about soon. And then also setting aside funds for the land trust to be able to continue its work in 2022 of purchasing and rehabbing homes and then making them permanently affordable through the land trust mechanism. 2021 also saw the introduction and reintroduction of two all affordable housing developments. We worked with both MICC and MWOF to apply for grants and to prepare for tax credit and bond financing applications in 2022. Uh, Melissa already mentioned the Riley, where 22 units of existing NOAA housing will be rehabilitated and affordability preserved. But we also engaged a new partner in the fight to preserve affordable housing in Woodlawn Terrace. We love this picture. On December 30th, the 30 homeowners of Woodlawn Terrace purchased their 53-site manufactured home community and became Minnesota's 10th resident-owned manufactured home community. 
Woodlawn is referred to as a hidden gem by its residents, over half of which have lived in the community for 20 years or more. Woodlawn provides an oasis of housing affordability in an area of the metro that is in dire need of it. After the closing, monthly lot rent will be $625, less than half the fair market cost for a two-bedroom apartment in Hennepin County. The City of Richville has been a strong supporter of the Woodlawn Terrace Cooperative since the beginning of the project, recognizing the importance of preserving the community's affordability and the value of maintaining local ownership. Staff and elected officials met with the co-op board and went on a tour of the community back in September. The HRA then committed $350,000 towards the cooperative's municipal water connection project and an additional $60,000 toward the demolition of abandoned homes and some rental unit rehab. In 2022, just another sneak peek of what's coming is we hope to provide down payment assistance to people purchasing any of the 21 new housing units that will be brought into the community. If you haven't had a chance yet to watch the recent moment with the mayor, I would encourage you to do so. Mayor Reagan Gonzalez does just a beautiful job of so showcasing this great story. And we'll move on to our programs for uh, our renters in our community. Our first program, which is sponsored by the Economic Development Authority, is our apartment remodeling program. The challenges of remodeling during the pandemic continued in 2021, and we processed just one apartment remodeling loan. Uh, new windows and a repaired parking lot were the results of the loan to this 11-unit building that houses residents who receive supportive services. Our Section 8 program in 2021, um, the big story near the end of the year was the preparations to open our Section 8 waiting list um, just recently in January. We purchased computer software, conducted training, set up a system, and ended up with a very simple, successful, and easy to implement um, system for the waiting list. And that's a little bit of a spoiler in that we opened the list for 10 days in January of 2022, and we received over 3,700 applications for our 600 slots. And our staff continues to work hard on, on getting that waiting list into place. Um, an additional fact to let you know is staff actually has individually contacted applicants who applied to the Section 8 list that might be eligible for our Kids at Home program and has invited them to apply to that program. Um, unlike Section 8, we currently do not have a waiting list for the Kids at Home program. Um, and speaking of our Kids at Home program, we helped 23 families in 2021. Some of the highlights from the years, we distributed COVID testing kits and high quality masks to all of our families. Our parent share group continued virtually, except we were able to host a health and wellness night um, in the summer where we, we offered a meal, yoga, massage, and other um, self-care activities and um, had kids watched by babysitters so that our parents could relax. We are really hoping to return to in-person parent share meetings this spring. They, uh, our families are really, um, really hopeful to get back together. They've created a strong community and really want to be able to do that in person. We dream of adding up to 10 families to the program this year. And I just wanna mention that applications are currently being submitted or welcomed. So um, they're due this Friday, March 25th. And the story about kids at home um, on how it inspires change. This is, a, um, this is not from this last year, this is from two years ago. <laughs> You'll notice no masks, so that's the clue. But the pictures were so um, wonderful from a celebration we had two years ago, we wanted to share them. So we love to boast about our program and we wanted to give you some updates on our program participants. Um, you'll recall this is the program that helps support working parents, mostly women, many of them single parents, in taking small steps needed to achieve goals and dreams of self-sufficiency. The first way this is done is by offering rental subsidies over the course of four years, allowing households to save money and put it towards one of their dreams. Those dreams might include paying off debt, buying a reliable car, going back to school, or enrolling their child in extracurricular activities. The second way the program helps participants is through our Parent Share Program. This is a required Thursday night parent group that meets to cover a variety of topics, touching on things like parenting, financial planning, health and wellness, cooking, hobbies, and mental health. It is in these sessions that participants are able to learn from one another, support one another, and get inspired for the things they are hoping to accomplish. It's where the dream of self-sufficiency becomes a reality, and they are then able to cast a wider net and hope for more. One thing that is really exciting from 2021 and into 2022, three of our families out of the 23 are home to first-generation college students, including one that got a full scholarship to the University of Minnesota's engineering program. 
These parents are able to provide the necessary stability to their children and re resulting academic success in part because of the kids at home program. And I will say that we are losing two families because they have purchased homes and we have one former participant who is currently in the process of looking for a home. We hear over and over again that people think this program is just too good to be true. We're so proud of the program of our staff that run it, but mostly proud of the participants that are working so hard to find success for themselves and their children. And they're just two fun pictures not to share. <laughs> and I'll turn it over to Kate to talk about our homeownership programs. I love hearing about kids at home. All right, thank you. I'm Kate Aitchison. I'm one of our housing specialists, and I'm happy to be with you here tonight to finish this up with our programs for homeowners. So some of the details this year, our first time home buyer program is one of our most popular and busy programs. And we did 11 loans this last year, um, lending $200,000 total. Uh, we are meeting our goals with our program, especially looking at um, equity gaps in home ownership rates and how we can best serve um, folks that uh, non-traditionally have been served by our home ownership market here in Richfield. So of our 11 loans, 91% were to non-white households, 73% of the households had children in them, 9% had house, uh, household members with disabilities, and 27% were Richfield renters. So we're really thrilled to see those numbers and so excited. Uh, with Richfield Rediscovered, this is our new construction program. We have uh, one house currently under construction, began last year, that's at 6625 2nd Avenue. And then we acquired one more property for the program, that's 6326 14th. In terms of our remodeling, transformation home loans were busy. We had a lot of homeowners struggling with similar supply chain issues last year, so it did make timing challenging for people who are trying to get projects done. We did five loans last year for over $100,000 in total lent. We have a lot of interest in the program right now and we're fielding a lot of calls for people that are eager to keep remodeling their homes and transform their homes so they can stay in Richfield forever. And then finally, our deferred loan program helps fund uh, health and maintenance repairs for households that can't afford them. So it provides full cost up to $30,000 and it does a lot of things like roofing and siding and windows for some of our moderate and low income households. Seven projects were completed last year and three new loans began. This is a program that's managed by Hennepin County for us and they do a great job. We also have ways to give people advice and that's through our architectural and remodeling advisors. And combined those two, two programs saw 72 visits across the city, helping people kind of you know, visualize what they want to do, how they're dreaming about using their house and then, you know, making it more of a reality. With our loan portfolio, we have over 350 loans and of those we did 23 subordinations last year with lots of people refinancing and we had 14 loan payoffs. And so those loan payoffs help recycle funds into our programs for more loans in the future. The home energy squad program continues to just keep chugging along and helping Richfield homeowners find efficiency gains to be made in their homes and there were 37 visits. We also try and do some events throughout the year and we had a virtual realtor workshop last spring, but unfortunately had to cancel our home tour just due to COVID concerns and uncertainty. Uh, we're really crossing our fingers and hoping we can do a home tour this fall. And I think people will be eager to see what people you know did during the pandemic. We've had a lot of big projects come through and it would be awesome to showcase those. And then finally, our department um, and kind of an interdisciplinary team has been working on the Just Deeds project to help bring awareness and education around restrictive covenants to the community. We had 24 covenants discharged uh, last year. There's been 163 uh, properties that have requested review of their title or their property records. And we've been presenting at different um, groups, things like the Farmers Market, PenFest, the Human, right, Human Rights Commission, and there's a display up at City Hall as well. But the story, like our favorite story and our favorite program to boast about is our first time home buyer program. And it's been such a joy to get to know some of these households that are using our program. And I wanted to just share a little bit about that with you. Uh, 2021 was our third year of the program and our busiest. We met some really unforgettable people and it was exciting to walk with them as they were journeying towards home ownership. 
you know, a lot of them, their dream is to become a homeowner. And it's more than just home ownership. It's for security. It's for safety. It's for building equity. You know, it's for finding peace or finding a place to call home and finding a community. And so it's really fun to be with them as they do that. Uh, one of our applicants was a single mom living in Minneapolis. And she and her daughter were working with her current landlord and Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity in their lending center to really try and get her into home ownership. Her landlord uh, had offered her to sell her a house he owned in Richfield. And so she was seizing that opportunity and Habitat was helping to make sure that it would be something she could afford. Um, she was really needing to move because she was struggling with a neighbor. She had a restraining order against this person and it was continually being violated. And she just was so anxious and stressed out and felt so unsafe in her home. Um, we were really excited to be able to work with her. And one thing we were able to do was grant her an additional $5,000 in down payment assistance uh, via an executive director approval. And that was to make sure she could find safe housing in Richfield or safe housing in general. Luckily for us, it's in Richfield. Um, but what we've done is we've added that as another criteria to our program. So if somebody comes to us and, and has that need for safe housing, we can authorize an additional um, $5,000 in funding for them with executive director approval. Um, we're really thrilled that she's in Richfield now. She works here in the community and her daughter attends school here. And we're really uh, thrilled that she was able to make this work and make Richfield home. Another household we were able to work with was a family of seven and they found a house in Richfield that was gonna fit them all and they were so excited. And it was our first home with a Sharia compliant loan or mortgage product. Uh, so that was a really interesting experience working with that lender to make sure that our program uh, complied with Sharia law and was going to be acceptable for them. It did, which was great. Um, and they were able to move in towards the end of the year. And then finally, um, we had another application come in right at the end of the year. And it was a Latino household that was really pooling all their family resources to purchase a home. Um, we have this last year made um, some loans with households that have ITINs. So that's if you don't have a social security number, you have an ITIN. Um, but unfortunately to qualify for that type of loan product, um, those households are really subject to really large down payment requirements and then higher interest rates, which makes it really challenging to purchase, especially in this market when prices are so high. Um, luckily this household wasn't an ITIN, um, but the way they were able to make it work um, was that the two young adults in the household applied for the mortgage. And I don't know what you were doing when you were 18, but I was definitely not qualifying for a mortgage for my family. Um, so it was really inspiring to, to see that they were, you know, using their income and their family resources to find a house for their family. Uh, we were really excited to be able to help them. And like I said, very impressed by them. And so they're here in Richfield now too. So that is our story. We're so excited to hear from them. I have some pretty pictures to show you from some of the remodeling projects. Now get ready, this one is stunning. So this is a before and after. This is the before, and these are the afters. They're obviously professional photos, but it's beautiful. We have looked at them very closely and it is truly a before and after. It is the same house, um, but lovely. Maybe they'll be on our home tour. We can ask them. Another kitchen remodel in an older Richfield house. This one also ran into supply chain issues and you know had to wait four months for a window to get their project finished, but they're thrilled to be in their new kitchen. This is the new house that's under construction on 2nd Avenue. So that was the existing substandard house that was removed. And then this is gonna be the two story home. Um, and it also has a basement accessory dwelling unit as well. It'll be roughed in and ready to go. And then finally a basement remodel. We know there's a lot of Richfield basements out there that need a facelift. And this was a family that was excited to add living space to their household. And I'll turn it back over to Melissa. Thank you. I love listening to those stories. Um, so this year, um, like everywhere, we had a lot of changing, uh, a lot of changes to staff. And I want to take a couple minutes to highlight the staff that left or is leaving and also talk about our team. Cindy Beldy uh, retired in September. She was a valued member of our Section 8 team. 
and her uh, fun-loving spirit is really missed in our department. Um, John, as you all know, accepted a position with the City of Saint, North St. Paul as their city manager. Um, and you're all familiar with his steadfast leadership. And um, I have some I have some big shoes to fill in that role. And then Mert Link. Mert is our CD accountant. She is transitioning to retirement. She's working part time really to help us out. Um, Mert has been with the city for nearly 30 years. She started in the finance department and then eventually because of the complexity of HRA finance, finances, she moved down to become the community development accountant in 1998. Her expertise in all things TIF and her assistance in managing all of our contracts, our developer reimbursements, and all things accounting and budgeting uh, throughout the years has just been invaluable to us. Beyond that, you know, Mert has been here for many years and she's a wonderful, wonderful friend to many of us in CD and throughout the city. Um, as she transitions to retirement, we're going to miss her both professionally and Personally, she's been a true public servant and the city and HRA have really been so lucky to have her. So she is transitioning this year and we will be working to, to fill that position. She'll help us make that transition. And then um, onto our, our current team. So I just wanna say that it's the month of March and we celebrate Women's History Month. And this is an incredible group of women that I'm so proud to work with. Um, Julie Urban, you all know well, she's been promoted to our assistant CD director. Her knowledge of housing policy and redevelopment made her an obvious choice for this promotion, and she's going to do wonderfully in this new role. We're so happy to, to keep her. Um, Mert Link, I just talked about. Michelle Luna, we welcomed Michelle back um, after a brief stint in brief stint in Minneapolis. She's part of our Section 8 and Kids at Home team. Uh, Talisa Parsons, she's also part of that Section 8 and Kids at Home team. She is, Talisa is such a hard worker and she is a ray of sunshine in our department. She volunteers to help us out with our outreach and just deeds and she does a wonderful job there. Lynette Chambers, Lynette is the creative mind behind our award-winning Kids at Home program. She is an absolute rock star at managing um, that program and Section 8 and handled this waiting list uh, with her team just marvelously. Latanya Dubois is our administrative assistant. You're also very familiar with Latanya. She ably helps to keep us on track with all of our staff reports, legal notices, mailings, and myriad other dates that we all have to um, keep track of in the department. And Celeste McDermott and Kate Aitchison are our housing specialists. You're also fairly familiar with those two, but they are wonderful at helping our Richfield residents to build new homes, buy their first home, make improvements to their homes, and so much more. Uh, there's, they are the smiling faces that so many people see and think of when they think of our HRA programs. So I wanted to take that extra minute. Um, it's been a tough year. <laughs> Um, it's been a tough couple of years for so many people and, and our staff has worked so hard to help uh, those in Richfield and I'm, I'm so proud of them. I hope you are too.